Okay. Uh, so I'm going to try something new yet again. Always trying something new. Um, and I'm just going to do a little intimate at home review with you people of an old release. We usually talk about new releases on Video Clerks, but since I'm at home and this isn't the usual format for the show, I figure I can do pretty much whatever I want. And so I'm going to start a new segment that hopefully I will keep on, a new tradition called Employee Picks. Okay. And the movie I'm going to be discussing today, <clears throat> the old release, um, not too old actually, this came out in 2003, and it is the movie Elephant by director Gus Van Zandt, made for HBO Films. This movie uh, is the, the second in Gus Van Zandt's Death Trilogy, as it's known as. Uh, the first being the movie Jerry, and the uh, third being uh, his Kurt Cobain um, homage, uh, Last Days, neither of which I've actually seen. I, need, I still need to get on those. Uh, but this movie deals in particular with uh, the, the tragedy of school shootings. And it, it makes no apologies to the illusions that it's trying to create. This movie is very, 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 very much inspired by Columbine and the shootings at Columbine. Um, and if you had asked me before I saw this movie, uh, should they make this movie, I would have said no. A thousand times no. I might still, uh, um, having seen the movie, say that this is not a subject that needed to be made into a movie. And I, you know, if I would seen Gus Van Zandt and, oh, I love your movies, My Own Private Idaho, Drugstore Cowboy, blah, 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 blah. I thought, oh, thank you. I'm doing this movie about Columbine. What do you think about that? I would have said no. No, no, no. Why are you going to do that? It's incredibly inappropriate. Way too soon. Um, I think maybe now, in 2010, um, we can, you could aesthetically start thinking about that shooting. But... Um, he managed to, to do this. He managed to do it tastefully, and he managed to do it really, really well. Um, and totally won me over with an idea I, sh I would have said, never, please just never do this. Like I said, it, it sticks with you. It's, it's in your head for years after you've seen it, or I imagine for years. I have only have a few months behind me, but um, it's been in my head ever since. And there's only a, a handful of movies that have uh, done that to me as an adult. Um, and this is definitely one of them. I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit uh, about the plot. Um, it's kind of it's kind of hard to say plot, because this movie doesn't really have a traditional structure, uh, which is one of the reasons I like it a lot. I guess if you've never read any, any uh, synopsis or anything like that, if you just grab this movie off the shelf, didn't read the back of it or anything like that, just pop it in, you actually wouldn't know that it's about a school shooting until until the last 20 minutes. Um, and that's actually one of the things that's very, very cool about this movie. The whole movie is a, is a build-up. It all has to do with the anticipation. You follow a character, one specific character, and they're walking through the hallways of the school, and they're going to one classroom, and then they go to another to pick something up, and then they talk to a friend on as they're passing in the hallway, and they'll end up in different rooms, and you're following one character, and then um, when when that character meets, uh, you know, the point of the climax of the movie, uh, the movie starts over from the from the beginning again, but from the other character's point of view, the one that he may have seen in the classroom, or the one that he may have seen as he's walking down the hallway, and it just it keeps doing this, and you think that would get really repetitive because you see some you literally see some of the same scenes like seven times in the movie. Um, another movie that kind of does. It, basically, the, the structure of the film allows you to understand the chronology of the day. Because um, whenever the characters intersect, oh, you're like, oh, okay, that was at that point in the day, so we're about here in such and such time. Um, and that's, that's just talking about the structure. And, uh, this is a very structural movie, and, and a lot of it, uh, the way that it comes off, and the, the strengths of the movie have to, have to do with how it's structured. Um, also, the acting is very good. Uh, there's, uh, as far as I know, I watched uh, I watched a little DVD commentary on it, and uh, 
the uh, special features, and it's talking about how Gus Van Zandt um, did not want to uh, hire professional actors for this, so he, he hires actual students, actual kids. He went to this school and had kind of a casting call, and uh, all of the, most of these kids are first-time actors. Um, sometimes, sometimes, in particular bits of dialogue, it comes through uh, the amateur amateur quality of their acting. But most of the time, it really pulls off well, and uh, it gives a certain jolt of reality to the movie. Also, what I really like about this movie is that this is a, a, a movie about teenagers with actual teenagers. Um, I guess that's not so uncommon anymore, but when I was growing up uh, in the... Uh, the late 80s and early 90s, a lot of uh, teen movies did not have teenagers playing teenagers. You had 24, 25, even sometimes probably up to 30-year-olds playing teenagers, and it felt very awkward. Um, this movie has real teenagers, very young-looking people, um, and it makes you feel for these characters a lot more as the movie's going through, because you can you can see their fragility, and you can see their vulnerable vulnerability. Uh, this movie also subtly um, brings up a lot of social issues as it's going through, not just the school shooting issue, which is which is obviously the uh, the mother issue here. He talks about obviously alienation and um, what it feels like to to not feel accepted in high school. And again, that that's something that's kind of cliche in these types of movies, but in this movie in particular, um, there obviously that has to be talked about, and it, it's it's brought up and shown in a very realistic way that I like. Um, of course, Gus Van Zandt himself is gay, and he he uh, it, it finds a way. That issue generally pops up in most of his movies, um, and I've heard some people actually say that to a fault. Like, why does he have to shove that issue in there? And I I, I think he he really handles it in a very intelligent way, and especially in this movie. And there's one scene in particular I won't spoil anything where um, where uh, he raises an interesting question. We'll just say that, and. Uh, and he doesn't answer the question. That's uh, another thing I really like about the movie, is that he, he's, he gives you all of these, these reasons. Why did these students do this? Why did this happen? Is it because of this? We don't know. Is it because of this? We don't know. He shows you all of the different problems that teens are going through, but in the end, none of that really is an explanation. It, it still is a horrific, horrifying, terrible experience. Uh, but this is not a horror movie. This is not a thriller. This is, you know, a, it's almost like a, 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 a faux documentary. Um, but then you don't you don't have you know shaky cam or anything like that either. It's all presented um, very immaculately. Um, I think it, it, you you might be able to say that you know technically speaking, this could be Gus Van Zandt's best movie. Um, he, there's not a wasted moment in this movie. There's not a wasted frame. You know, everything's very intentional. There's no no sloppy camera work here. It's all, it's, it, it, you can tell it was a quick shoot. Probably they probably filmed the movie. I, I'm guessing just, I, I probably this was probably mentioned either in the the commentary or the special features. But I'm guessing it was probably less than a two week shoot. Um, and. Uh, you know, there's long tracking shots in this movie, and the camera has to follow these students for a very, for a very long time. And I'm a, I'm a fan of long tracking shots. I think uh, if you're a fan of film, you you kind of you kind of I don't know for some reason get off on that. Um, Scorsese's Coca Cabana scene and in Goodfellas and such like that. There's there's very choreographed scenes like that in this movie, but somehow don't feel choreographed at the same time. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Um, I give this movie, you know, high praise, and if I were to give it a grade, I suppose I would give it somewhere between an A minus and an A. Um, and it's 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 not a comfortable film. It's not one that you're going to want to put in and watch a hundred times over. You know, uh, the last ten minutes of this movie, the last fifteen minutes of this movie, are both stunning and powerful, but incredibly painful, incredibly shocking. Um, especially as how controlled and and uh, choreographed everything up until that point. Um, so, I guess with that in mind, I really have to see Last Days because I have sort of the same uh, problems with that. I just don't think you need to make a movie about Kurt Cobain. 
Um, and this isn't. This is this is about Columbine, but it also isn't. It's it's a fictitious school. He uses fictitious names, and he's almost presenting this as a thought experiment. Watch this movie, rent it, and uh, you guys have a good day. Bye bye.